So wrapped around here, you have tons of tendons. This is hard to do without a chart. We got to get a. We need anatomy charts badly. Tons of of tendons and ligaments and supporting structures. Otherwise, this would all just fall apart, right? It's not like it's just screwed on like this and you know bungee cords. It's not like that. So, <laughs> so if you have a lot of muscularity up here, you're going to be less likely to to injure yourself for this to happen, to this to happen, right? All of that is less likely. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. So, yes, yes, he needs more jaw muscles. So, right? How how would this have come to be? Look, you're swinging your arm, right? and you're swinging it, you're swinging your arms, and you think, well, where? At what? Before you know, mammals lost their sideways stuff. Primates came along, and, and now we have this motion, right? Bigger motion, and and the critical nature, the 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 chest no longer is a blade, like a mammal is built like a blade, right? It's like that, and then that starts to flatten in the primates, and so what happens is the shoulder blade is in the way. The shoulder blade's not in the way on a dog, it's or a horse, it's like out there, you know. You, but it's in the way. You raise your arm, your shoulder blade goes down and goes whack right into your ribs. And that's it, you know? So you have to have several clever devices in this kind of Rube Goldberg shoulder to be able to take it around and move in all different ways. But it's really important that you do, because if you become a brachiating primate, a primate that swings to get around, a real swinging primate, then if you grab a hold of a branch, you have to be able to reach up in front of yourself, pull, have suspended weight, enough muscles and enough structure to suspend that weight, keep on going, let go in back of yourself, and then start looking in front of yourself. And grab a hold of another one, swing, right? And then let go of looking in back of yourself, grab in front of yourself, and just and move. Like, wow, really fast. Faster than a land animal can move underneath it. So, you know, it has distinct advantages for survival. You know, the cat's trying to get to the, the cat's trying to get to the monkey and you know, it's like go up that tree. <laughs> oh, it's, it's three trees away already. <laughs> Start that tree. Well <laughs> it's already ten trees away. Now. So you can't really catch the <laughs> a break eating animal at in full in full operation. So you get this complex shoulder girdle structure that can swing and, and go all around and and then in humans it's changed into a completely flat chest you know we're, we're extreme we're we're very wide animals with a lot of laterality and and uh and, and we're built for it all, you know all the joints of our body of course have to conform to key features like that Yeah, I know, but I met this weird guy just the other day, just yesterday, in fact, who, uh, he, uh, he goes upside down on his hands, you know, and he does the weirdest things. He can rotate his pelvis and his shoulders while he's upside down there. Do you know of anybody like that? Where do you go? <laughs> so, I mean, you know, that's, that's really good use of the shoulders. Oh, sorry. It was, by the, it was hiding behind the grapes. Yes. <laughs> I remember reading that uh, Neanderthal or Neanderthal could not throw a ball the way uh, modern humans can. And I actually wondered, is that so? Is throwing a ball a recent mm. evolution? I, I'd be surprised if a Neanderthal couldn't throw a ball because they're not that different. It would think. And, anyway. and okay. primates can throw balls very well. So it's, you know, yep. I can't see why that would okay. why that would be. But I don't know. Um, well, your ability to throw a ball is also somewhat gender-based. You know. Yeah. You, ca you cannot train little girls to do an overhand pitch with a ball. And until they're four years old, and then they can be taught. Up until then, they can't do it. 
they did they'll, they'll go like that they'll go like they nope it just doesn't they they can't be taught they can learn it very fast once they're four but little boys at the age of two practically says this will spontaneously that's how they throw the ball but see that has to do with division of labor in previous earlier societies where where this became the most critical skill to get your protein in this in the tribe and having peripheral vision which women have much better have and being able to sway your hips and pick this over here and pick this over here and have a kid on this hip and you know <laughs> one kid on the breast one kid on the hip one <laughs> it's like amazing you know <laughs> so they have different brains you know much more adept i think women's brains are more suitable for the modern world it's multi multiple demands but uh that is a one of many differences between boys and girls yeah there was yeah yeah it's a critical function that so it emerges earlier and in the actions of the child or later you know depending on whether how critical it was for that that uh that gender or that tribe even so uh um, but that's you know i i don't want to deflect this from just the the point of the structure of this and how it works and then what i'd like to do is let's get this guy on the table we're going to change his position in a minute anyway so i i was it was supposed to give an fi lesson today to elena yeah i know but i i i said to you we had somebody else that was more important so <laughs> So if you if you look at the a really neutral way to pick up the shoulder you can see how this is really neutral right to reach across the body you pick it up right right up the midline and right near the face the whole thing is designed to make that real easy so the design isn't just a matter of what's possible or that you can break it or throw balls what's really counts is can you get your hand to your mouth with some food <laughs> you know what I mean like that's that's much more critical so so the joint surfaces and the integration of the body is is going to be more built for those common activities that are more extremely vital for survival does that make sense so you just think you know take an arm and you want to go oh yeah as if you were taking the hand to the mouth and then you could go beyond that so we're going to go beyond that and you'll see right here hmm the the clavicle and all this is getting tied down so to speak the scapula can't move so it's not in a way I'm even demonstrating this but you could try to get an idea it will move so that when you lengthen an arm right you're lengthening that way yeah you see how I'm pulling through the scapula and lifting the clavicle so it's that movement and down that movement and down yeah and then what we'll do is we'll turn him on his side now i think that this is going to is that place we can oh hey psst. Okay. Now you stay there. Or, or we'll take out another bone in your foot. <laughs> he would need a headrest. He would. Right? So let's give him one. As properly he should have a headrest. So let's um let's give him something bigger. Something a little more ample. There. <laughs> oh, thanks. So He's got his headrest now. Okay. So, here we go. We're going to take the arm, make sure that it's possible to cross near the chest where it almost certainly can go no matter how damaged. Up near the face. Up 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 and now here maybe we can see how the ah, yeah. There we go. As the clavicle turns, the scapula is moving. You see that? 
See what? So it's so. Look, if we go down, that happens. It's turning the other direction. The whole unit exactly that way. See that? So when you then pull an arm, if you went further, you you would be pulling it up that way and pushing it down that way, right, up that way. And down that way. No, no, you're doing this. That's real different. So this is an arm going up into the air, not backwards. Think of where, maybe I should aim his fingers. There. That's right. And you're pointing there. That's the movement of your scapula in the direction your fingers are pointing. That's right. And then down. No, not, don't bend the elbow or you won't, your scapula won't move. It's a matter of learning to, to move the scapula up and down. So the clavicle goes with the scapula, and you'll see every movement, right? It moves right along with the scapula. Uh, 